good afternoon. You guys, what's up? Um, yeah, it's another gorgeous day. We are, hey, hey, we are um, enjoying some cool weather. I don't know what we did to deserve it. I mean, I do know what we did to deserve it. Um, so that's exciting, having some chilly weather. And that's why I'm wearing my long sleeve because I was, my house was pretty cold this morning, but I'm sure that will come off eventually. And um, just like we usually do on my, um, let me let my friend out here. <laughs> Come on, it's becoming a daily ritual for me is during my classes, letting my kitties out. Um, <clears throat> As we usually do on our uh, days when the moon is doing something cool and important, um, I'm gonna draw from my moon deck. So last time um, it was the new moon and we were reminded um, from our card pull to um, honor and um, uh, remember and be reverential um, towards our ancestors, which was pretty cool during the new moon. So today is the um, last super moon of 2020. It's the flower moon, which is why I've got my uh, space vibed up with some flowers around me because I like to be extra. And so I'm just going to shuffle these real quick and just see what we pull. Hmm. And this just can kind of help us in this um, time of where we don't really have much of a set schedule as far as like outer influence of a schedule. Um, it can help us, <clears throat> it can help us uh, bring some, uh, a little bit of a rhythm into our lives by attuning to something that's outside of our own selves. So I like to bring the moon cycles into my, um, my life and my classes because it helps me kind of direct a little bit of um, intention in, in there. So um, what we pulled is very lovely. Um, my emotions move through cycles and connect me to my truth. So if you just want to take a look at that imagery, I know the writing is hard to read, but lovely. My emotions move through cycles and connect me to my truth. That's a great reminder, especially as we are going through so many cycles of emotions um, these days. And I'll just read briefly what that, um, and mean so. Uh, we are cyclical in nature and fluctuate. We ebb and flow, rise and fall, contract and expand, and everything in between. Our cycles are a gift and carry deep and rich wisdom. Embrace your cycles and know that they inspire heightened intuition and creative genius. They also unearth buried desires, reveal where self-care is lacking, awaken directive inquiry, and invite you to truly feel your rhythm. If you resist your essential nature, you may feel disconnected or lose touch with your ability to self-regulate. Your body informs and guides you. Pause and feel. Stagnation may be a call for change. Feeling stuck may be a sign you need to move. Weighed down with clutter may be a nudge to make space. Give yourself permission to feel your full range of emotions and your multifaceted nature. This is the key to your vitality and wisdom. So, that's really great, the pause and feel. So stagnation, calling for change, feeling stuck, um, assigned to move, and feeling kind of weighed down um, with clutter, either mental or physical, um, can be assigned to create some space. And the cool thing about that is we, we do all of that on our mat. We do all of that work um, in our practice. So let's, let's get to it, shall we? Um, make sure you've got all the um, items around you that you need for your practice. I don't know that I'll cue anything specific uh, requiring blocks, but if you like to work with them, have them um, in arm's reach. And let's begin with child's pose. Take wide knees, but tuck your toes, just for this child's pose. So everything's pretty much as you would do a normal child's pose with your knees wide, your fingertips are stretching. So you should feel some lift in the armpits and length on the sides of your upper body through your waist. 
And then there's this reaching of your tailbone back towards your heels, which are now lifted since our toes are tucked. And this is just opening up the arch of the foot and stretching the backs of the toes. Again, just that process of kind of un unloading whatever baggage you have, maybe from uh, the morning or earlier in the week, just unload that off of your body, off of your mat. And the quickest way to do that, to access that lightness, that decluttering, when we feel weighed down is just to breathe deeper, feel more embodied in your breath. Let's take a couple of open mouth exhales. So inhale through your nose. And open mouth, sigh that baggage out. We'll do two more. Inhale, big into your belly. Open mouth, sigh. Ah, it's okay if some noise comes out, let it come out. Inhale. Sigh. Great. Now close the mouth. And let your breath relax into a natural rhythm that still feels intentional. Another deep breath in and deep breath out. And walk your hands back. We're just going to walk hands back towards our knees. Pull your knees together and sit your heels back onto your, uh, sit your hips back onto your heels fully. Just feeling a little bit of intensification in that stretch in the toes. It's called fire toes. Make sure your pinkies are on the floor. Sometimes I need to untuck mine and put them where they're supposed to be. Bring your fingertips to the mat, lift your knees up just for a moment, and then set them back down. Flip onto the tops of your feet, lift knees up again as far as feels good, and then set them back down. Let's come to tabletop. Just getting the structure of your table nice and sturdy so if someone were to come over and try to shove you they wouldn't be able to so it's a little bit more active than just being on your hands and knees and kind of just letting your joints hold you up you're going to hug those muscles to the bone so that they're holding you up as well press your shins down into the mat press all 10 fingers all the knuckles the entirety of your palm into the mat so your wrist is doing less work and then keep that engagement. Inhale, lift your chest, tip your tailbone up like you're trying to reach your tailbone towards the crown of your head. And then exhale, same thing. Try to reach the crown of your head towards the front of your pelvis. Cat. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. Inhale, lift your chest big, stretch your throat. Exhale. Cat. Come back to neutral. We're going to take some um, side body stretches here. So sway your hips side to side like you're trying to open your ribs away from um, its partner hip. So your left ribs will open away from the left hip, po hip point. And then you'll switch sides, spread out the other side. And we're just taking care of the space where our internal organs live. So go side to side. And then we're gonna integrate all that in together. It's big circles. So you're almost coming through cat and cow again, but you're making those hip circles. And nobody's watching, so get into it as much as you want to. And sway. You can. Bend your elbows deeply and almost like come closer to the floor. And then we'll come back still into our cats. Take another inhale to cow. And let's tuck toes downward facing dog. 
Measure out your dog. If you'd like, pull forward to a high plank. That'll give you a good sense of where your hands and your feet should be in your down dog and just lift hips back. Might be a little bit longer than you're used to, but it's really what's gonna give you the most balance in your triangle shape of your down dog. Take a breath in. Take a breath out. Lift your heels up and then just press them gently back towards the floor. So it's almost like we're not really pedaling our feet, we're doing it at the same time. We're just lifting heels on the inhale, sinking them down on the exhale. Lift heels, sink them down. Try to keep the tailbone reaching up and press and lift and press. Okay, now step the right foot forward about a footprint's distance. So back of the right heel in line pretty much with the left toes. And you're gonna let the left um, heel kind of drift away from the mat and then keep pressing your chest back towards your thigh. You'll feel an intensification of the stretch on the back of your right leg. This will help us get nice and, uh, nice and uh, open in the back of the legs and we'll start to feel maybe a little bit of a difference in our dogs. Take your right leg back, step the left foot forward this time. Sink the left heel, but keep the right heel up. And soften your knee if you have any kind of hamstring attachment um, issues or any um, overstretch issues in the back of the leg, just soften the knee here. Take a breath in, breath out. Let's step back to our full dog. Roll forward, upward facing dog with toes tucked. Pull your chest up and then roll on back, downward facing dog. We'll do that two more times, feeling that full body wave forward and then full body wave back. One more. And back. Nice, y'all. Come up onto your toes again. This time, bend your knees, look between your thumbs, and then step or hop forward. Come to a half lift, lengthen the spine, and then forward fold, release it down. Half lift, heart pulls forward. Fold, release the head. And again, half lift, forward fold. Come all the way up to standing. Reach arms big overhead. Once they get overhead, hook your thumbs together like you're trying to make a shadow puppet butterfly. Reach up. And then with some momentum, we're gonna fold over our legs and then interlace our hands behind our low back. Reach the knuckles up. Spill the head down. Inhale. Exhale. Start to bend in the knees like chair pose. So your chest is pretty close to your thighs. And we're just gonna twist over to the left side, feeling our left shoulder open, and then our knuckles are drawing in the opposite direction. So knuckles right, chest left. And then through center, knuckles left, chest right. Through center and open. Through center and open, really using this first part of class. We'll do that one more round. Just to notice where we are in all the little areas of our bodies, lower and upper, and then come back through center. We'll sweep the arm down, scoop the arms up, chair pose. Take a breath in, deep breath out. Inhale. Exhale, don't cheat yourself on this chair, y'all. Sink back, take another breath. Exhale, and then stand up all the way, breathe in. Hook the thumbs again, butterfly fingers. Draw the fingertips back, lift the chest. And then again, with just some momentum, fold. Sweep the arms down, interlace the hands behind the low back. Sink, chair. <laughs> Chest is low though, shine the heart left, knuckles go right. 
your center, and then switch. Right brightens the heart towards the right, knuckles go left, and then back to center. Take an inhale here. Exhale, release the arms, stay in your chair, sweep them up. Forward fold, let all that hang. So a little bit of heat, a little bit of stretch. Half lift, inhale. Step your legs back, high plank. Take a breath in. Chaturanga. Upward facing dog, flip over your toes. Downward facing dog. But this dog might feel a little bit easier. We'll measure it out again. Pull forward, high plank. Downward facing dog, sink the heels back. Come up onto your toes, bend your knees. Step, hop, or float. Half lift, fold it out. Come up, stand straight up and tall, reach the fingers high. Exhale, forward fold, hands come through center. Half lift, inhale, high plank, exhale. Take a breath in, chaturanga. Feel free to drop to your knees if you need. Up dog on your inhale, down dog, exhale. Right back up onto your toes. Bend your knees. Make sure you're looking where you're going. And then step or hop. Half lift. Fold, drop down. Come up, big breath in. Sink back chair. Take an inhale. Exhale, hands to heart. We'll take a breath in. And we're just going to subtly twist the upper body towards the right. So this is not a very deep twist. We're not there quite yet. Keeping the thumbs tracking with the center of the chest. And you'll notice I'm staying upright. I'm not hooking my elbow yet. And then make sure the left hip is staying in its place and you're twisting only from the spine. Inhale. Exhale. Come through center gently and then move over to the left side. So I'm barely moving, y'all. Right hip continues to draw back. Inhale. Exhale. Come through center, breathe in. Forward fold over your legs. Half lift up. Step back, high plank. Inhale right here. Come to your knees, your chest, and your chin. So booty still popped up in the air. Draw yourself forward. Come to Cobra Pose. And then lie all the way down. Arms reach alongside of you. Locust Pose. Lift up. Exhale. Take another breath in. All your body parts lift up. And then lower down. We're gonna take our fingertips wide, in line with our shoulders, elbows pointed up. Just your fingertips um, on the floor, like you've got like a, one of those fancy cupcakes underneath your palm and you don't want to squish it. Press those fingertips down. Lift up into this wide cobra. Keeping the tops of your feet pressed down. Inhale, and then exhale, drop your left shoulder and left ear to the mat, then up. Look over your left shoulder, and then again, left shoulder, left ear to the mat. Lift up and look towards your left heel, left shoulder, left ear. Come through center, inhale. Right shoulder, right ear, dip towards the center. Then come through center, look at your right heel, and then dip, shoulder and ear. Stay high up on your fingertips, lift up, look back. Dip, shoulder down. Once more, lift up, look back towards the heel. Dip, shoulder down. Back up, inhale. Lower down, exhale. Palms come underneath the shoulders, roll forward, up dog. Downward facing dog. Take a breath in. Take a breath out. Take your right hand off the mat and tuck it behind your low back, palm turned up. Thumb is in towards your spine. And then try as you, as best you can, keeping level 
in your hips. Inhale, exhale. From here, keep your arm where it is. Pull forward to a high plank, and then roll onto the outer edges of your feet. First side plank with your arm tucked behind your back. So I've got my feet staggered here, so I feel really sturdy. It's going to be a little bit harder if you stack your feet. And just start reaching for the side of your left, like your left hip with the right hand. Turn your gaze up, a little bit of a back bend here, pull the shoulder back. And then exhale, high plank. Take a breath in, right to down dog, exhale. Left palm comes up away from the mat, stack it onto your low back. Take a minute to just reintegrate your down dog here. Don't, don't get too cockeyed on me. <laughs> and then pull forward, high plank. So we're taking our time, we're not gonna rush, even though that left hip really wants to lift up. And then pressing down on the right palm, roll onto the edges of your feet. And then start to reach that left hand for your right hip. Pull your shoulder back. Look up. Take a breath in. Breath out. One more here. And then exhale, swim the arm around, high plank. Breathe in, chaturanga. Upward facing, downward facing. We're going to feel a lot of activation during this flow through different areas of our bodies. That's intentional. We're going to try to see if we can hit all the chakras here. Take a breath in. Exhale. Lift the right leg up behind you and bend and peel the hips open, stacking the right hip on top of the left. Inhale and exhale. If you can, come up onto your fingertips here. Strengthening the muscles in the hand. Take a breath. And empty. One more right here. Reach the right knee up high. And then bring it forward right down the center of your mat. Set it down. Lift your left arm up. Inhale. Exhale. Lift your left leg up. Inhale. Exhale. Take another breath. Let it go. One more here. And then bring the left leg all the way around. Low lunge, left leg forward. Pop up the right knee. Adjust your feet as you need to. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, stay, stay right here. You'll probably feel a good stretch in your right hip flexor. Breathe in. Breathe out. Start to come light into your fingertips. Swim your arms forward. Take a breath in. Breath out, reach your arms up, inhale, press and lunge. Left leg is forward, y'all. Tuck your fingertips right behind the um, base of your skull, with the nape of your neck. You're gonna open your elbows, reach your arm or your heart forward and up. It's like you're trying to tip it up to the ceiling as best you can. And then we're gonna exhale, close the elbows, round the spine. Your elbows will kind of come in towards your knee. Inhale, lift your heart, poke your shoulders into the back of the heart space. Exhale, elbows come forward, round in the spine. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, pull in. Inhale, exhale, one more inhale, back, exhale, reach the arms straight up, breathe in, y'all, breathe out, another inhale, hands come to plant next to your feet, step the left leg back, high plank, knees and chest and chin. Pull forward, cobra pose. And then come all the way down. Lie in your belly. Arms reach back, locust. Exhale. 
Take another breath in, lift your body and lower it down. Up dog, downward facing dog. Take a breath in, send it out. Left leg comes up. Bend and stack the hip. Spend a few breaths just encouraging the stretch. Y'all don't resist the stretch, encourage the stretch, even if it takes more effort. If you can, if you'd like to take the variation of coming up onto your fingertips. You don't know until you try. <laughs> Two more here. Exhale. And then one more big lengthen. Left knee or left shin comes all the way to the center of your mat, coming into that modified side plank. Reach your right arm up. And exhale. Reach your right leg up. Breathe out. So now that you've got more contact with the floor than you usually do in your side plank, you can really focus on the lifting and turning up of the heart. For two. For one, big reach up. Draw the right foot forward. Adjust the legs, come to low lunge. Pick the back knee up. And we'll lift the chest just to stretch the front of that left hip. Become lighter in your fingers. Start to take the weight off. Come up, crescent lunge. Go ahead and take the sweatshirt off as I knew I would need to. Reach up, inhale. And then just slide the fingers behind the neck. Feeling nice and sturdy in the legs because they're working really hard, right? We've got our feet pressing down. And our outer hips and inner thighs are hugging in towards the center to keep us stable. Pull the elbows back, reach the heart up. And then exhale, draw the elbows together, tuck in over that knee. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, pull forward. Draw the breath out, y'all. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, lift up. Try to be stable as you can be. Exhale, it's our last one like this. Inhale. And then exhale, reach the arms up, breathe out. Take another breath in, start to descend the arms, frame the foot, step back high plank, take a breath. Knees, chest, chin, cobra pose, heart open, lower down. Locust, strengthen the back body to open the front body. Two more breaths. Inhale, lower all the way down, exhale. This time we're gonna lift our heart to upper facing dog. And then bend the knees, settle back to puppy pose just for a couple of breaths. We've done all that nice front body opening. Just kind of feel that reward of all of our work. And press the forearms and palms down, pull yourself forward, tuck your toes, forearm plank. Take a breath in, exhale. Take your right fingers and just like tickle your left elbow, roll onto your um, like tip your left hip up, hip up for forearm side plank. Take a breath in and exhale. Just like before, we're gonna stagger our feet with the right foot leading. And then inhale, lift the right foot off the mat and exhale. Tiny pulses for 10, nine, eight, seven, 
six, five, four, three, two, one. Now attempting to not let that right leg drop, snake it back through. We're gonna come right over onto the other side. Forearm plank, this time keep the right leg lifted. Tiny pulses up for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Forearm plank, breathe in, breathe out. Okay, let's see if we can do this. Maybe they can lift at the same time. Press down on your palms. Lift your elbows up and take downward facing dog. Take a breath in. Side out if you need to. Take another breath in. And let it go. Take your right leg up behind you. Bend and stack. Take a breath. Flip your dog. No excuses, y'all. You can do it. <laughs> Inhale. Exhale. Breathe in. Breathe out. Here I want you to focus on your right rib and the relationship of your right rib to your right hip. And see if there's any space there that you could emphasize. Reach and stretch. And exhale. Take another breath. Empty out. One more here. We're going to come back to the hip opener. So down dog with the right knee is still bent and open. Take another breath. And exhale. One more here. Right shin comes to the center of the mat, just like we did before. This time the left leg's gonna stay planted. Tuck the left fingers behind the nape of your neck. Lift the right shin off the mat. Inhale, exhale, knee to elbow. Inhale, knee to elbow. Inhale, reach out. Knee to elbow, squeeze them together, make them touch. Reach out, knee to elbow, lift up. Just one more, y'all. Reach out. Exhale, left palm comes down. Keep the right leg lifted. Roll over to wild thing. A little bit different here. We got the left leg straight. And then the right knee is bent, toes landing down. Take a breath in. And a breath out. Inhale. Exhale. One more. High plank, breathe in, knees, chest, chin, up dog or cobra, lie on your belly, locust pose. This time let's take a bind behind our low back if that's available. If not, you can just rest your hands on your low back, trying to pull them towards your heels. Lift up, knuckles to heels. Breath in, breath out. One more, lower it down. Up dog or cobra, down dog, low back. Inhale, exhale. And take one of those full body waves to up dog, and then wave back to down dog. Pull forward, high plank. Exhale, forearm plank. Take a breath in and exhale. Left fingertips come to the right elbow. Roll onto the edge of your foot. And we're gonna switch the stack of our legs here, the um, straddle or the straggle, and um, lift the left leg up. So it's the bottom leg is lifting for 10, nine, pulse y'all, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Come back through, this time right forearm down, left arm up, left leg still lifted for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, forearms down to the mat. 
Let's try it again. Press both palms down to lift your elbows. At the same time, it's hard. Downward facing dog. Take your left leg up high. You bend and you stack. You take a breath in. And then you flip your dog. Right? Notice the space between your very lowest left rib and then that top lobe of your left hip. And that might increase if you reach your left hand a little bit closer to the front of your space. Breathe in, breathe out. One more breath here. Exhale, come back to that stacked hip, down dog. Take a breath, reach the knee up. Glide it forward, center of your mat. Side plank variation, inhale. Exhale, this time keeping the right foot planted. Tuck the um, fingers behind the neck. And then hover the left shin off the mat. Inhale here. Exhale, knee to elbow. Inhale. Knee to elbow. Out. And in. Out. In. For five. Four. Three. Two. And one. Reach up. Land it down. Let's come back to high plank. Oh wait, no. Oh, sorry guys. I forgot something, didn't I? <laughs> so try not to let the left knee drop like I did. Do as I say, not as I do. And then roll over, wild thing. Take a breath. Exhale. Another breath in. Another breath out. And then one more big reach. Now high plank. Inhale, drop your knees to tabletop. We're gonna flip our palms, or um, flip your fingers. So wrists are forward, fingertips back towards your knees. Double check, make sure your alignment is still productive and considerate. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cow. Inhale, lift your chest. Exhale, cat pose. Inhale, exhale. One more lift of the chest. And flip your palms back to your regular tabletop. And then come forward, snake on forward to cobra or up dog. Roll back, down dog. We're gonna do something kind of funky now. Cross your legs so that your right foot is ahead of, or not really ahead, but your right shin's ahead of your left shin. And then your feet are just side by side, pinky edge to pinky edge. So you're gonna cross leg down dog. Keeping your legs crossed, pull forward, upward facing dog. And downward facing dog. Legs are still crossed. Upward facing dog. This time we're going to swing our heels kind of back and forth. I know it feels weird. It's supposed to. we got to do the things that feel weird because that means it's stuff we're not used to doing. Good. Come to stillness back center. Roll back down dog. Reverse the stack so left shin ahead of right. Press your heels down as best you can. Pull forward. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Up dog, slither on forward, and this time just rock side to side. If this is sensitive in your low back, make sure your tailbone is still neutral and not popping up too much. And then we'll roll on back, downward facing dog, untwist your legs. <clears throat> Take a breath in. And a deep breath out. 
Take your right leg above your head. Step forward, start in a little lunge. And then taking the right hand inside the right foot, spin your left heel down. Side angle. And reach the left arm forward for extended side angle. And then seeing if you can use just the muscle around your belly button. You're going to lift up warrior two, staying low in that lunge. Deep breath in. Anchor down. Feel that? Even if you're tired, even if you feel like a lot's going on, you're here on purpose, so let's act like we're here on purpose. Deep breath in. Exhale. Reach up to a nice big five-point star. And then sink both, um, both knees down into a deep squat. Goddess pose. And so just like we have many cycles of our emotions and our thoughts, we have many cycles to our practice. The more fiery, solar-powered, high movement, high intensity portions, and then we have these kind of slower, I'm not saying they're easy, we have these moments where our bodies are mostly still. And that can sometimes highlight the fact that our brain doesn't know what to do with stillness. But that's why we practice. Take an inhale. Take an exhale. Breathe in, reach back up to that star. Exhale, wide leg forward fold. Hmm. Give yourself permission to just drop your upper body between your legs, dangle the crown of your head. Then lift up to a half lift. Reach your arms forward. Those same tented spider fingers are going to reach forward about like two feet maybe. Beyond the edge of your mat if you can reach. So we're going to have like a tented down dog upper body and a wide leg forward fold lower body. And walk your hands over to the left. Keep feeling that right hip pulling back. Breathe into the right lung. And then walk through center to the other side. Left lung gets to breathe big here. And then back through center. This time we're going to walk all the way over to our left leg in a little lunge. <clears throat> Place the left palm to the inside of the left leg, spin the right heel down, open up to your side angle. And depending on if you like to use blocks here, you can certainly use blocks. I will prefer that if we can stay low, stay low, so avoid like coming way up here for right now, if that's possible. And then reach the right arm forward, elongate the right side. In. Breath out, notice the sensation. Just noticing them will help move your energy to them. Our energy goes where our attention goes. And then pull those muscles tight around your belly button and start to lift up, warrior two.
Breathe in. Breathe out. Relax the mus muscles that layer around your hinge of your jaw. breath in, exhale, one more right here, release the hands to your low back, take a grip of your hips, come back up, goddess pose with your palms grounded on your hips, and then there, reach arms up, step to the top of your mat, mountain pose, arms are down, close your eyes, Just imagine that even though there's no tension or effort in your hands, imagine that there's almost like these weights in your palms that are just drawing your shoulders down away from your ears. Reach both hands up, inhale. Sit back into chair. Take a breath in. From your chair, sit all the way back to your heels. See how slow you can take it without your knees separating. And then let's come into boat. <clears throat> your shins can be about parallel with the ceiling above you. If you want, you can straighten your legs. Inhale here, exhale. Take another breath in. And just separate your knees, making this diamond shape with your legs. Breathe in. Exhale. Bring your fingers behind the nape of your neck. Take a breath in. Exhale. Right, uh, right elbow to left knee. So we're just twisting here. Inhale. Center. Exhale. Left elbow to right knee. Try to make the contact, y'all. Inhale. Center. Exhale. Twist. Center. Twist. Center. Twist. Come center, try to straighten your back in the center, and then twist from the rib cage, y'all. And twist. Center, twist for four, three, two, one. Bring knees together, press your palms into the tops of your thighs, right where your knees join and then push against your thighs. Try to keep your chest lifted and open. Push for 10, nine, eight, seven. Really try to push your thighs away. Four, three, two, one. Roll to your back, <clears throat> legs high. Give them a flush, a shake. Then extend both legs down, hover them off the floor, reach the arms above the head, right fingertips to left toes, go one, two, three, keep the head lifted, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, release down to the mat. <clears throat> Bring your feet together. Start to walk you the meat of your upper arms underneath your back. Hugging your shoulders in towards the center. Come up to bridge. Interlace your fingers if you can. Take a breath in. And exhale. Breathe in. Breathe out. For four, three, two, and one. Big inhale, gently lower. 
Wheel pose if it's in your practice. Stay in bridge if it's not. Five breaths going up. Four. Three. Two. Stretch open. Crack open. And one. Lower down. And we're going to take fish pose. So that'll be our first kind of um, winding down pose if it's not. And then you'll have plenty of stuff around you probably to help support you. If it's not in your practice, you could do a supported fish. <clears throat> Rolling up your blanket, placing it into the center of your back or putting your block there and then bringing the crown of your head to the mat. That's an option. If you like fish pose, just tuck your hands underneath your bottom. Palms down. Elbows are on the ground. And bring the very top of your head to your mat. Unless you're doing headstand every single day, which applause if you are. The crown of your head doesn't really receive much attention as far as like pressure. So you can imagine this as just like a little bit of intentional pressure on the top of your head, your crown chakra. And then you can also feel probably, and you can hear it from me, it's difficult for me to talk with my throat so open. This is also a really activating pose for your throat chakra and your heart chakra. And if you're at home and nobody, you know, or even if it's not, someone's around, like who cares? Close your mouth and make some humming sounds to help stimulate the thyroid. Mm. See, I'm doing different pitches to activate different areas. Mm. Tuck your head. <sighs> Come to your mat fully. And we're going to take um, reclined half pigeon. That way we don't have to get up, right? We've done a lot, so. If you're feeling just intensely called to take half pigeon as traditional. Answer that call. I never want you to ignore those intuitive instincts, but if you feel more open to a variation, take this variation and rock side to side with your right ankle crossed over your left thigh. It's more of like we're talking between solar and lunar. Since it's the full moon today, just Maybe taking a little bit more of a lunar approach. More movement, more fluidity, more softness, less forcing. And then we'll just let that whole set up. So keeping your knees, your legs crossed, bring your right um, foot to the floor and just turn your head to the right as your legs are over on the left side. And then come back through center and take a little bit of a shake, the flesh of the legs. Let all that settle into our bones. And then on the left side, left ankle crosses over the right thigh. And then just swim your hips back and forth as feels good. 
to this intentional movement. So we're not just fidgeting, right? We're not moving for the sake of moving. We're moving intentionally to access different areas of the muscles and different areas of our fascia in order to bring the stretch into places that might not feel it consistently. Which is also why we did those kind of wild cat cows. <laughs> and then just when you're ready, drop that whole setup over to the right side. Turn your head on to the left. chin into your chest, stretch the whole back body. Imagine tailbone to the base of your skull, adding just one more millimeter of length there. Inhale. Shavasana. Don't skip Shavasana. We're all in the same boat, y'all. We all could be cleaning something. We all could be doing something else, but just don't. Let your body lay down. It's how you build trust with yourself is saying, you know what? I need this and I'm gonna take it because we deserve it. Just let the spaciousness increase and increase and increase in your body and in your mind. I like to imagine it as like sound waves that are drifting further and further apart. stay in this for as long as you like. In fact, I encourage you to stay in it for at least another few minutes. If you're ready to transition, make sure you ask yourself the question, are you ready? or just feel it out in your body. The mind sometimes complicates things. And if you're ready, roll onto your side. Let it be a process. And from where you are onto your side, you can lift up to your seat. Keeping your eyes closed, gathering your hands at your heart space. Um, I just want to end with our poll that we did, the my emotions move through cycles and connect me to my truth. Let your emotions come as they come and let them show you something about yourself that maybe you didn't know before. I love y'all. Stay safe and healthy. Namaste. Mwah.